Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles. Today I wanted to share with you guys an origami arrangement of, of sorts where we kind of take um, origami and use it in a way for everyday use. And when you really think about it, gift bags are a perfect example of how to use origami techniques along with craft techniques. So um, last week I showed you guys how to make a gift bag that has no gusset. And this week I'm going to show you guys how to make a gift bag with a gusset. Now a gusset is a little part that lets you basically stand your bag up, um, basically a bottom to it. So um, you can put big thick things in here and it'll all fit. <laughs> and you can also use this technique technique to make your own uh, you know, gift bag with handles too if you happen to have some rope lying around that you, from other bags and stuff that you can use. Um, but this is just some sort of a fun way to use maybe paper that you might have lying around. This is a great way to use extra paper that just doesn't seem to work for any of the gifts you have anymore that's always lying around. Um, a good way to use that. And also if you have origami paper you can make origami bags and make really pretty things like that. So I'm going to show you guys today. Uh, first let me just talk a little bit about the math and numbers behind all of this, of course. The first and easiest way you can make one of these bags is just take a piece of paper and make it and say, hey, look, this is how big it was. Okay, let's see what'll fit inside. That's one approach. <laughs> The other approach is to try to make your bag the right size for what you're going to put in it. Um, if you have uh, your object in mind and you know how um, long it is, that's one thing to consider, and how deep it is, uh, if you have both of those numbers, if this is L and this is D, ah, we're getting into algebra. Ah, no, I don't want to scare you guys away. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you do want to consider those two numbers. You want to add those two together and then give yourself a little extra for the top so that you can consider how you're going to fold things down and with the depth so that you can overlap just a tiny bit. I like to give myself at least 15 centimeters. So that's the first thing to consider. This is how um, long your paper should be. And then how wide your paper should be is to be considered here with the object's width. And again, you need to consider the depth again. So uh, this is W and this is D. Um, the width we need to consider, of course, we're trying to wrap something up. So we need how big it is times two plus a little extra so that things can connect and seal off at the top. So we need a 2W, and then we also need to add the depth, just one side of it, um, so just one, and then plus a little extra for uh, the overlapping of things. So maybe give yourself a little extra with 10 centimeters. Um, and that should give you good enough room for what you're working with to make sure everything comes together right. Another thing you can do is just eyeball it with the item you're going to wrap while you're making the bag, too. That's always a good thing. Have what you're going to wrap around and then kind of make sure as you're making the bag that everything will fit in it when you're done. So if that math scares you, <laughs> don't be scared. It's okay. Um, I'm going to just show you guys how to fold everything with just a regular origami piece of paper. And this is 25 by 25 centimeters paper. And I'll show you guys the steps of the process of folding it so you can kind of get an idea of how to do things. Um... I've got my paper here, and I'm just going to first mark off where my center is, and I don't want to put a giant crease right through the middle of my bag, so I'm just going to go ahead and pinch at the top and the bottom here so that I know where that is first. And then I can kind of do what's a door base, but instead of bringing it right to the center, I'm just going to go beyond it by about a centimeter or so. Get that started. And then I'm going to also do the same thing going this way. So um, I should get double that space that I've overlapped there for the middle here. It gives you a nice big strip of where things overlap to give you a good secure bag. So I've got those two parts overlapping and what I want to do now is connect right here in the middle. Now uh, you can either use double-sided tape. You want to put on the side that's on top of the tape as close to the edge as you can. Make sure that the tape's width is not any bigger than the distance that you have here where these overlap. Make sure of that otherwise you'll wind up getting stuff stuck together and your bag will never open again. Um, when I put glue, I also want to keep that in mind of how much space I've got here. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a piece of paper down that I don't need so that when I get the glue on this side, I can just go ahead and put as much glue as I need right along that edge, right up close to the edge so that I get a nice finished part to my bag. So you get a nice closed off part to your bag there. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and fold up the bottom. And this is where you can kind of think about how deep whatever it is you're gonna fold. When you fold something up, you're gonna be creating basically the depth of the bag. Minus just a little bit at the top where things overlap. So you can kind of consider that when you fold this part up. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold up now along the bottom edge here to kind of show how far and how deep I want my bag to be. Once you've folded that up, then go ahead and open things up here and put down a little pressure on the side so that this part can open up and reveal a nice little triangle here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side too. Then I'm gonna take the bottom part and fold it so that it goes beyond the center by a little bit. And you know you don't wanna to go too far on this because you did consider just a little bit of overlap space, not a lot. And then I'll take the other side and fold it too. And you can bring, this is a little hard to see with the red paper, you can bring it so that this edge meets right at the center where that little creased edge is. That's the way that you get a nice balanced gusset down here at the bottom. Try to get everything as parallel as you can. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and secure this edge here with a little bit of glue. And again, you can use a piece of paper there to make sure you don't get glue all over the rest of your project. And I don't want a lot of glue extending too far because it's just really the tip that's gonna hit here. So I'll get that part glued off. And then, as the last little bit here, I'm going to take the sides and fold in to where the little triangle is on the inside. And this is going to help create the side that I need to create the creases for the side of my bag. So I'm just going to kind of go along here, get a good crease going, and do the same thing over on this side too. Try to get a good crease. And then we're gonna go ahead and open it up. And this is gonna be the base, of course. Make sure the glue's dry before you try popping everything open. You can see we've got the bottom down here and then the sides. And then one thing we can do with the sides is reverse the creases so that everything goes right so that it kind of does that nice little accordion fold on itself. This side right here on the outside is already going the correct way. I want to get this other outside going the right way too first. And then I can just fold those two together, reversing that middle crease to become a valley so that I can get this to come together. Now, there is a fancy little thing to do down here, and you can choose if you want to do that or if you just want to kind of leave it. You don't necessarily need to do it unless you plan on collapsing the bag later. I'm going to just kind of leave it like this so that it doesn't need to be too much of a hassle. And I'll do the same thing over on this side too. So we've got a gusset that's this big down here at the bottom and a nice little bag that can hold something and stands up. And then you can choose how you want to deal with all this extra at the top. Um, you can uh, fold just straight down, put a nice little sticker there or something. You can put a, a little serrated edge as well if you wanted to. Um, you can also put a ribbon through here by kind of folding this and folding it if you double it down a couple times, then you can take the ribbon around and tie it in the front for a nice little effect for things. Um, but that kind of gives you sort of the finished project. Now, if you wanted, this is a pretty long and tall version because of the way my paper was, but if you wanted to add a handle, what you can do is just uh, find the right length of the handle you want and secure that with tape here and then put even an extra layer of paper over to kind of secure it and give it some strength and make it look nicer too. If you look at bags, gift bags that have handles, you're basically mimicking the same process, process that they did to make a handle if that was something you wanted to do with this particular kind of bag that has a gusset. And um, like I said, it can be a really great and fun little project that you can do for the holidays and give you a nice another extra variety choice of ways of wrapping up gifts um, and I'll try to have some paper available for you guys to print too here uh, when we get close to the Christmas season you can use some of those for printing your own little bags too so um, I'll be having some more fun projects for you guys in the days coming up so keep a lookout for all that and thank you again always so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time